here in the Pacific, the eastern Pacific. The hurricane season actually started a couple of weeks ago. And while there have been many close calls here in Southern California, only once has a hurricane directly hit our area. Late September 1939, 75-mile-per-hour hurricane force winds battered Southern California's coast. As surfers paddled out looking for the perfect wave, witnesses standing on shore in Newport Harbor watched in horror as boats began to capsize in the rough seas. I had never seen anything quite as severe. Longtime Newport Beach resident Art Gronsky was 19 years old. There were still some boats out at sea that wanted to get in. 45 people were killed that day, mostly at sea. We lived in a little wooden house, and I'm telling you, we were scared. Connie Price and her family watched the storm as they huddled inside their Long Beach home. I think we lost about three chickens because the wind was so severe. It took them right out of the coop. Dozens of homes were wiped out here in East Long Beach. Countless others were heavily damaged. Where we're standing right now, there was a row of houses that continued all the way down the beach. Long Beach historian Stan Poe says Detroit. the area had been experiencing a heat wave that week when the storm struck without warning. The weather report was for occasional cloudiness but no showers. The hurricanes are traveling west. Today meteorologists here, believe the odds they, of another hurricane or tropical storm Coriolis, making landfall in Southern California remains extremely unlikely. Well the main reason why tropical cyclones are, are rare for Southern California is Simply the water temperature is too cold. The devastating storm of 1939 is the only known tropical storm to ever hit the California coast. But recent evidence suggests that a much more powerful hurricane hit San Diego in 1858. And now experts are wondering if the two events could mean bigger storms to come. The historical record is short. William Patsard is one who believes we may be long overdue. The NASA climate specialist says sea temperatures here are getting warmer. And during El Nino years, hurricanes born to our south have inched closer to the California coastline. With a warming climate, the possibility of that big hurricane coming ashore in Southern California definitely increases. But for 85-year-old Art Gronsky, the deadly storm of 1939 was simply one too many. I've never seen anything like it since then. <laughs> Well, actually, we got fairly close to another hurricane back in 1997. You both remember the El Nino mm -hmm. year, and the water mm -hmm. temperatures warmed about 5 to 6 degrees. Hurricane Linda was a Category 5 hurricane, one of the strongest hurricanes ever in the eastern Pacific, and it moved fairly close to the California coast before finally pushing back That's out to sea. something we don't even think about. No, we don't, here. but we need to. Yeah. All right, thanks a lot, Pablo. A pair of bald eagle chicks hatched on Santa Cruz Island for the first time in more than half a century. Eagles have been rare on the Channel Islands, but as Channel 4's Pablo Pereira reports, the bald eagle is now making a comeback. Just 20 miles off the coast of Southern California, America's symbol of freedom is making a comeback on Santa Cruz Island. For the first time in more than half a century, a pair of bald eagle chicks were hatched only weeks apart without the aid of humans. I think it's very significant. It's a sign of recovery of the island ecosystem, a sign of the return of the bald eagle. The last bald eagle born on the Channel Islands was way back in 1949. But these magnificent birds that once flourished here disappeared only a few years later due to human impact. Bald eagles were a really important part of the ecosystem here. We Kate Faulkner says the now banned pesticide DDT released into the ocean waters off the Palos Verdes Peninsula years earlier contaminated the eagle's food chain. Well, what it does is it causes the eagles to lay thin shelled eggs. And the eggs are so thin that uh, they dehydrate, they lose moisture, and the weight of the birds actually crushes the eggs. This is about an eight-week-old bald eagle chick. Now, the bald eagle has returned. Since 2002, 49 of the birds bred in captivity on the mainland have been released here, part of an overall island restoration project. Finally seeing uh, eagles in adult plumage here now and seeing breeding taking place, that's just, that's just sort of the, uh, the, the ultimate in the, in the whole process. For the next month, Santa Cruz Island's newest residents will spend their time here in this hack tower, getting familiar with their outside surroundings. Then, fully grown with a wingspan of some seven feet, they'll be released into the wild. 
but they won't reach breeding age for some five years. This valley here. Until then, each bird will be electronically tagged for future monitoring. When I start, first started out working here just a few years ago, I never saw bald eagles. And within the last year, year and a half, you consistently will see bald eagles, both juveniles and some now with the white heads, which is how we best recognize the bald eagle. Some have left the island, traveling as far away as Idaho. But the hope here is a now cleaner food supply in the nearby ocean will lead to more births, so that this symbol of American independence doesn't become a symbol of American neglect. Reporting on Santa Cruz Island, Pablo Pereira, Channel 4 News. All right, from there, take a look at this. You're looking live at the webcam that's been installed on Santa Cruz Island. It's called the Eagle Cam. It provides live streaming images of the first chick to hatch that Pablo talked about. For more information, go to our website, www.mbc4.tv. Look under news links and just click on Eagle Cam. Green is universal, and an award-winning documentary called Fuel opens this holiday weekend. Pablo here now with more. Pablo. Well, Kim, it's the culmination of an 11-year journey by a local filmmaker to educate the public about biodiesel and much more. Looking for alternative ways to fuel our transportation and energy needs has been a decade-long mission of filmmaker and author Josh Tekel. My name is Josh Tekel. I've spent my life searching for a solution to those problems. This is my backyard. These days, you'll find the Santa Monica resident cruising the coastline. We we're wondering if we could talk to you about your truck. Looking to talk to almost yeah. anyone about what's under the hood. What do you think about using a clean fuel? Like, would you put a, would you put a diesel engine in here so you could use biodiesel? No, I can't hear. I can't stand diesel engines. No. Tekel may have an uphill battle, convincing folks like Coach Garcia to convert his 56 Ford to a cleaner source of burning fuel. But he's hoping his new documentary film, Fuel, will convince others to at least consider it. Thank you for waiting, may I pay you order, please? Can I get a medium Sprite and uh, all your used cooking oil, please? What do you mean? You know the used frying oil that you fry things in? For Tekel, the documentary has been more than 10 years in the making. Despite a few lighter moments, the film carries a very serious and personal message. I grew up partially in Louisiana among the oil refineries, and the oil refineries put out a tremendous amount of pollution. All that pollution goes into the water, into the food, into the air, and I watched members of my family get sick, and some people actually died. Fuel received last year's Audience Award at Sundance for Best Documentary Film. While the new version adds information on other alternative energy sources, it's the renewable, sustainable biodiesel used to propel him across the country in his used cooking oil-powered veggie van that remains the focus. This is totally recycled, 100% recycled. Yeah, tastes like biodiesel. Now, you wouldn't do that with petroleum. And forget modifications to your diesel engine. Recycled biodiesel, which can be made from dozens of renewable organic raw materials, is ready to just toss into your diesel-powered vehicle. We're not talking about a future fuel or far-off technology. It's here today. I've been driving this car for five years. It runs fine. Fuel opens in limited release here in Los Angeles this Valentine's Day weekend. And for more on this documentary, all you have to do is log on to our website at NBCLA.com and type in the keyword fuel. Kim, back to you. All right. Thanks, Pablo.